James, thanks for coming in. Right, right. I know you're flying out today, right. so I really appreciate you giving us the time. Talk to me. What What is this problem? Well, all right. The, the problem is, first of all, when we talk about LSU, we're talking about what they refer to as either LSU A&M or LSU Baton Rouge, which is the flagship campus, right. that, that's in, with, you know, which is represented by the football team. Let me give you one example going about it unfair. Because of the way that LSU is governed, if we just simply put the medical school under the auspices of the chancellor of the Baton Rouge campus, we would jump 30 places in the rankings. That's why these college rankings. Just How? Why? Because, because it's based on how much research money you get. And a medical school gets tons and tons of grant and research money. But because we have a chance of the Baton Rouge campus, we have a chance of the medical school, we have a chance of the law school, we actually have a chance of the ag school, believe it or not. And we have a chance of the UNO and a chance of LSU Unis and a chance of LSU Shreveport and a chance of LSU Alexandria. And so, and then you have an LSU system, but you can't imagine by the time that a dollar gets through that where it is. So what a lot of what people are arguing for is we should simplify the structure, take some things, put it under the Baton Rouge campus. You would jump in, so let's say we're number 90 and Alabama's number 70, well, we wake up the next day and we're number sixty, and Alabama's number seventy. Just by that, just just by that one move. Now there are a lot of other things that need to be done, but that's that's one thing in terms of the governance structure. And to me, that sounds like common sense. Why is it not done? Because everybody has got a fiefdom. The ag people want to have their own chancellor. The medical school people they they want to do their own thing, and they don't want to they want to re- report to a different place. And, and so you, you have that convoluted governance. Let me make it even worse for you. Louisiana has more degree-granting universities per capita than any state in the union. Any state in the union. I, I wouldn't argue that, that higher education in Louisiana is anything to write home about. But if you take the number of people living here, the number of places that you can go get a degree, it's higher than any other place. So what the legislature typically typically does is just give someone what they want. And as that you have that accretion over a period of time, it really, really messes everything up. And somebody at some point is going to have to kind of restructure the entire deal. You know, you mentioned the agriculture department. I was reading last night and said the agriculture department, because of the financial problems you're talking about, threatened to declare financial exigence, exigency, <laughs> uh, which means demand immediate remedy. What does that help if the agriculture department comes out and says, okay, that's it, uh, yeah. we're broke, we need, we need immediate remedy? Well, first of all, what that means is, and that's a, that's a, that's a word that you, universities shouldn't sling around, it basically says you would take academic bankruptcy, which would allow you to overturn tenure. But also, once you start talking about that, what's going to happen? Who's going to want to go teach that? So you're trying to, you know, you know, and 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 uh, if things got worse, who knows? But that's a that's a word. That's like we we need to send a nuclear bomb to Iran. But once you start talking like that, you're 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 opening up something that has a lot of a lot of ramifications. And I'm not an expert on it. Uh, but uh, I think that I think there's a little brinksmanship going on. When here. when you talk to to people off the record concerning LSU, and you mention what you just mentioned to me, uh, all of these multiplicity of chancellors. No, number one, I meant to ask you the question: Is that repeated anywhere in the United States, or is that indicative only to us? Well, you can ask Chancellor Martin, but I think we are we're at the top of the pecking order in terms of how convoluted our system is. So when you talk to people off the record and you say what you just said here to the audience, uh, is their response as, look, I, I got my own little thing here and I'm not going to give it up. Let somebody else yeah, give it up. Yeah, and, and you, know, and the, you know, understand the law school has its own chance. A very competent guy, you, you know, but he's like, well, you know, if, how is this going to affect the law school? I, you know, and I don't know. And then the law faculty, you know, and, well, you know what, they're going to do this and we're going to have some guy and, you know, and, and the medical people, they're, they're like in a big battle down here and who gets what in this hospital and you know, uh, get in that. See, I want to make a, a larger point here about LSU Baton Rouge. And I, and I think that, that you'll agree with me. LSU Baton Rouge is not the best state university in the country. I wouldn't argue that. Michigan, Virginia, 
Cal or, or Texas, some one of those places, North Carolina. They're all, you know, really great sort of universities. I could argue that we're the most improved. By, in terms of graduation rate, in terms of quality of students, the last 20 years, the only other place that even challenges us is the University of Maryland, if you look at the statistics. Really? Yes. I mean, grad, oh, it's just unbelievable the quality of students. That we're getting at bad Rouge. But I'm not going to argue that. But what I, what I am going to argue is to our state, LSU Baton Rouge is the single most indispensable university in the country. If, why? Why? Okay, well, let's think about it. If you're in Alabama, you go to Auburn, you go to Alabama. If you're in South Carolina, you go to Clemson, you go to, Car- you go to South Carolina. So if you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, an entrepreneur, an engineer, if you're going to rebuild the coast, if you're going to be a big agricultural, if you're going to, if you're going to be, if you're into extracting energy and you've got to have a degree in petroleum engineering, there's only one place you can go. That's LSU. There's no backup. Tulane's a great university. I teach there. But outside of a certain impact here in the city of New Orleans, Tulane's impact in the rest of the state is not very much. So what we're doing is, is we're taking the indispensable asset that we have that, that, that is hiring the people, that's making the laws, that, that's curing the diseases, that's building the levees, that's working on the coastline, that's extracting the, 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 the energy. And we're demeaning that. It, and it, it makes no sense. We're literally eating our seed corn. And, and, and I'm not, this is not to say that you know or, or, or Nichols or, or, or Delgado for that matter. Don't all have a Southeast and have a real important mission, but the mission of LSU is to train the professional class of this state. And, and, and when I see this happening, it's like they can't really be doing this. They cut the state appropriation from, I want to say, a $245 million to, to $153 million. They've lost 10% of their faculty. I talked to the chancellor about this, but the, the provost told me we lost three of our best computer science people. Now, God knows that's what this state don't need is computers. We just, yeah, we just that, got that, the that, digital that, laws changed. Right. And, 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 and we also got funding issues here. We should we have governance issues, but we have funding issues. 